Hello everyone, it's Chaplain April and I am just going to do a quick unboxing here. Yes, I fell for it. I bought one of the boxes from Israel that you can um, order. It's like a quarterly thing um, and I have not opened it yet. I'm trying to figure out how to open this. So I think there's a couple of different ones, um, but I went with the Artsa box. Um, there was something in there that I really, really liked. It was this um, bowl, it's a fish bowl. And of course we know that the symbol of the fish um, was what the early Christians used um, to know that they were Christians, the ictus. Um, and see it says, Holy Land Delivered. Uh, I'm so excited. This actually came like two weeks ago, but I haven't really had um, the time and the place to do this. Um, we have a house guest right now, and she is a friend of the family. I know her family. Um, when I lived in Costa Rica and I was growing up, her parents were in our church. And um, so I've seen them, you know, just grow throughout the years. Um, I remember when her brother was born and they would bring him, Jonathan, to the church when he was real little. He's all grown up now. They have four kids. Um, one of the major memories that I have of her family was um, one time when my dad was itinerating and we were alone in Costa Rica. At that time, my mom would preach um, at the church. She would do the preaching and... Um, so my friend's mom, um, their first baby had died. And I remember my mom brought us, I guess it was just me and Michael, I don't know, but um, brought us with her to the cemetery. And I remember it was a cemetery and I think it was in Piedades. And um, I remember standing there at the cemetery while my mom prayed. Um, and we, you know, they buried the, the, the son that had died and, um, then she went on to have four more kids. So, um, it's just pretty amazing. And her daughter, Helen, their names are Sonia and Pablo and their daughter, Helen is with me right now. She's been here for about three weeks and, um, she's on a tourist visa. She does not want to become a citizen or anything like that, but, she would like to get a work visa and maybe stay for a while and work here. But I, I've tried and tried and tried to get with an immigration attorney and it's just been so difficult. Um, I've made lots of phone calls. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I couldn't get through to anybody. So I finally got an email this morning and I've even emailed the consulate. I've emailed all these places and we couldn't get the information because she wasn't sure how long she could stay. She's been here three months and she thought she could stay six months, but we want to be really sure because if she goes against her visa, then, you know, it's not a good thing for when she wants to come back. So we just want to be real careful. Um, so I finally have, um, a consult with an attorney um, next Tuesday and then she's leaving on the 14th so maybe for when she comes back I can figure all this out anyway it's kind of involved but I will let you know kind of how that goes it's kind of hard to know how to do this camera here um, okay so let's do this right how do you open this thing? Oh, it's down here. Okay. Here we go. I am really excited. Um, the Holy Land delivered. Oh, this is this says Jezreel Valley. Oh wow, look how beautiful that is. I can put this up here on my wall. Um, I just got all my degrees and stuff put up. You can only see a few, but my, my, you can only see a few of my certificates, but I have my bachelor's, my master's, um, posted over there and I would love to put this up. So it says, welcome to the Jezreel, Jezreel Valley. Few places in Israel 
are as aptly named as the Jezreel Valley. I got my glasses, I got new prescription lenses in these, so I have some new glasses, um, a couple of new pairs, but these, these are my Chanel <laughs> frames. So I am not getting rid of those. So I kept those and I had new lenses placed in them. I love these, they're a dark green. Taking its name from the ancient city known in Hebrew as Yisrael, God sows. It is Israel's biblical and contemporary bread basket. Its primary source of wheat, cotton, and corn in the days of the Bible. Jezreel Valley was a busy thoroughfare. It was impossible to travel from north to south of Israel or even from the east to west without passing through its fertile grasslands. It is the very terrain that Jesus navigated when he tested the faith of the ten lepers, where his words, why is this foreigner the only one who came back to give thanks to God, told of the importance of gratitude and belief. And it goes on and on. Some pretty pictures there. Amidst the rolling hills, Mount Tabor stands alone, the most distinctly marked site in the region. From atop its summit, one can soak in the breathtaking views of the sprawling vistas below. On the mountain itself, a diverse array of flora and fauna complement its evergreen textures. It is here that many believe that Jesus ascended together with Peter, John, and James, son of Zebedee, where he was transfigured before them. <clears throat> hmm. That's interesting. I thought I thought he transfigured. Oh, okay, no, he transfigured on one mount and then he ascended on another. His face shining as the sun. This very mountain, it is taught by many, is the point at which human nature met God, where the temporal and eternal overlapped, made possible by Jesus' transfiguration. Wow. In 2021, archaeology Archaeologists in Taibi, in the northerly region of the valley, unearthed a 1,500-year-old inscription of the words, Christ born of Mary. The engraving is the earliest known reminder of Christian life in the region, recovered from a Byzantine-era church. The finding is a testament to the palpable Christian influence in the area, making tangible the strong sense of biblical tradition that its history commands. After all, this is the same valley where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal, proving beyond all doubt that the Lord, he is God, where Gideon's 300 men defeated the Midianite army, aided by the fact that the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. At Arza, we are excited and lucky to share another small piece of biblical history with you. Over the past few months, we have sought out the best artisans that the region has to offer, locating uh, and custom making the products that we feel best encapsulate the cultural flavor of the Jezreel Valley. Each product has been exclusively designed for you, the Arza family. With the plants in full bloom in these summer months, we have filled your box with a range of products that capture the land at its most vibrant and fruitful time. We hope that through them you are able to experience the harvest season together with us as the Lord of Israel blossoms with the fruits and flowers of the summer. Oh my gosh, wow. So what is really cool about Israel and all the archeology span that goes on there. So when we stayed there, when I was with my mentor, we stayed in a, a place right there outside of the city gates of old Jerusalem, right by, I think it's called the city of David. There's like a little place there where they're doing archeology span and excavations and stuff. But all throughout Israel, they do excavations. And so there's a verse in the Bible that says that, um, gosh, what is that verse? It's something about how the land that will reveal God, it will reveal the truth of God. So all of these are archeological things that they find, every single one of them points to the fact that the Bible is true. Everything they find, they find um, coins, they find you know things that are mentioned in the Bible that some people even questioned. So they, when they find these things, it just time and time again, 
confirms that the Bible is truth and it's telling the truth. And so uh, that is an amazing, amazing thing. I could, I could do like this little series on even, but um, so the archeological finds there, it, it's just like the earth is giving up the information. It's giving up the information and the truth of what actually happened. <clears throat> no matter what people want to say or think. So this, let's see, what is this? Okay, one of the national parks. There are a few sites which promise richer soil spoil to the first happy explorer with permission to excavate. George Adam Smith, The Historical Geography of the Holy Land. That's what I was just talking about. Smith's words encapsulate the deep, deeply significant history preserved by what is today Bay Cheon National Park. Inside its confines, the park houses the staggering remains of the Roman and Vincent, Byzantine city of Bay Cheon. High above them, a mound commemorates the place in which the biblical Bay Cheon could once be found. The site typifies the ever-shifting demographics of ancient Israel, the city survived the Roman and Byzantine empires, the early Muslim period, the Mamluks and the Ottomans. In 1101, following the Crusader period, it became part of the Latin kingdom of Jerusalem. Never heard of that. Atop the hill, one has a panoramic view of the archaeolo archaeologically recovered amphitheater, an incredible structure that housed up to 7,000 people and the largest public boathouse ever discovered in Israel. Walking amongst these ruins is like stepping back in time, bringing to life some of the most spectacularly preserved relics of Israel's past and conjuring up the biblical histories of a site that was once the administrative center of King Solomon's vast kingdom. I talked about King Solomon not too long ago on one of my videos. Here's another one. Tell Megiddo. This ancient storied city nestled in the heart of the Jezreel Valley is a living testament to its rich biblical past. Tell Megiddo was one, one of the great cities fortified and developed by King Solomon. Its walls towering over the surrounding countryside, its gates open to all who sought refuge within. But that was just the beginning of its story. Throughout history, Tel Megiddo has been a vital military stronghold, strategically located at a major crossroad of civilizations. <clears throat> its streets and buildings have seen countless bottles, battles and conflicts, each leaving their mark on the city and shaping its destiny. Excavations at Tel Megiddo have uncovered many fascinating artifacts including an ancient chariot burial site and a water system that dates back to the 8th century BCE. I don't like BCE because it's before the Common Era. I prefer BC, before Christ. The city was destroyed and rebuilt several times throughout its history, with the most significant destruction occurring in the 6th century BCE. Today, Tel Megiddo is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that attracts thousands of tourists each year. Visitors can explore the remains of the ancient city walls, the palace complex, and the stables that house King Solomon's horses. How cool is that? Tel Megiddo is a testament to the rich and varied history of the region. Wow, okay. Let's see, what is this? Ooh, creamy pashtida pie. Pashtida pie. So this is a recipe. Looks pretty good. I might try to do this. Artsa pie spice, onion, leek, carrots, garlic, broccoli, florets, peas, boiling water, salt and pepper, egg, butter, flour, whole milk, salt and pepper, cheddar cheese. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. It looks like a tort. Okay, Jezreel Valley. Lavito's Lavender. Oh, this is what's in the box. Okay, well, we'll read this one as we pull everything out here. Artisan, these are the artisans of the items. 
Okay, so we'll look at these as we pull the stuff out here. I'm going to unseal this. Yeah, yeah, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Oh my gosh, what is this? <sighs> look at this. I'm not sure how this goes because I do not read Hebrew, but that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It's like a tapestry. Um, okay, so let me read this little thing in here. Oh, wow, it's really, really thick and beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so this The artist Yair Emanuel lives and creates in Jerusalem. Emanuel's designs of Judaic art are based upon a fusion of traditional motifs and ancient Jewish manuscripts with modern and oriental art. Vivid and harmonious colors, as well as a mixture of the old and the new characterize Emanuel's work, which he designs and crafts in his Jerusalem studio. Wow, look at that. How beautiful. I love it. Chocolate? No way. I am such a chocolate person. I love chocolate. Wow. Choco date. Cocoa and date balls with almond butter. Okay. I'm on a diet, but or calorie restriction, I should say. Not really diet, just calorie restriction. So it has protein, fiber. Okay, well... I'm not big on dates, but let's try this. Oh, it's soft. Okay. Our choco date balls are manufactured from only three natural ingredients. In a unique process we have developed to provide you with the perfect combination of dates, cocoa, and almonds. Okay. It's pretty good. All right. What little treasure do we have here? Oh my gosh. Look how beautiful this is. I love it. This is so pretty. It looks like Tiffany blue. <laughs> Everybody loves that Tiffany blue. I've actually been to Tiffany's over there on, um, what is it? That famous area in Los Angeles. It's beautiful. I'm not sure who actually made this because there's no name on the box. And I guess we'll find out here in a minute. Spice mix for omelets and pies. Oh, so this is the spice mix that you use when you make that recipe. Wow, I wonder what is in here. Before you soak the mixture in a quarter cup of boiling water for five minutes. Okay. Hmm. green pepper, fried onion, red pepper, dried carrot, dried garlic chips, dried basil, dried parsley, dried dill, dried champignon mushrooms, black pepper. Hmm, interesting. So amazing. Can't even tell you how good that smells. Okay. Definitely be using that. Alright, what is next here? La Vido body lotion. I just gave away all my lotions because I I don't use them. Um 
as much as some other people do. But I do love them. Oh, look at that. Okay. Love you, dough. Aromatic body lotion, Bulgarian lavender, and jojoba. Well, let's just try this right now. Smells really good. this all the time. I think I'll keep this here. What else did we got? One last thing. Oh no, two last things. Soothing, relaxing eye pillow. Eye pillow? Okay. What does that mean? The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Isaiah 34, 1 through 2. I tell it. Well, how does this work? Oh, okay. I have one of these for my neck. So I guess you heat it up and then you just kind of lay it on your eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels really good. Yes, relaxing, relaxing already. Oh, yeah, if that was warm, oh, that would feel so amazing. Wow, I never even thought to get one of those ever in my life. Okay, this is why you buy these type of things because they're stuff you would just probably never do. And so it introduces you to it and then voila, you're transformed, right? Pamper your senses with our unique Israel Sensual Aromatic Blend. Our scented eye pillow is filled with a calming mix of organic lavender flowers, Mediterranean sea salt, and locally grown wheat and comes encased in a custom designed pillow inspired by the scenic fields of the Jezreel Valley in summertime. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Can't believe how they put this all together. I am so impressed. This pillow is perfect for promoting a sense of tranquility, wellness, and relief from stress and anxiety. To use it, simply chill in the freezer for 30 minutes, slip over your eyes, and let the cool air aromatherapy benefits of the lavender work their magic. Oh, I thought you heated it up, but you cool it down. I guess that makes sense because you want any swelling you have on your eyes to kind of go down. The pillow is lightly weighted with wheat and sea salt, allowing it to rest comfortably over your forehead and gently mold to the shape of your face. It blocks out light and envelops your senses in a soothing fragrance, helping you to feel refreshed and rejuvenated. Hey, I'll take a spa day any day. Sign me up. I am there. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, what is this? Let's see. What is this? Illuminate your home with the beauty and wonder of the Holy Land with our exquisite designs. Inspired by the rich biblical history of Northern Israel, we have carefully selected two pieces that will captivate your heart. So it just looks like um, a bunch of lamps. Now let's open it and see what in the world is going on in here. Taka Jewelry. Okay, not sure what that means. Ah! Oh, wow. Look at this. Wait, are you kidding me right now? Okay. What is this? A lampshade? The Taka Jewelry is made out of paper and is highly flammable. Therefore, it mustn't contact the fire directly. Use heat resistant glasses so the flame is not in direct contact with the glass. I'm confused, what is going on? Use glasses with large openings that allow hot air ex to exit safely. You may fill the glass base with a thin layer of rice or salt in order to protect the glass from leakage of candle wax. Like it goes on a lamp. 
goes on a lamp. It's like a shade. Does it go on? Immerse yourself in this stunning antique map that showcases the land of Israel. Wow, look at that. This is so cool. Look at that. It's a map. The land of Israel as it was in the time of Jesus. Wow. Trace the border cities and towns that still stand today. This map evokes a sense of nostalgia, reminding us of the incredible history that surrounds it. So it shows you how to set it up, place the candle, oh, so, so you place a candle inside of a glass. It looks like a wine glass. Marvel at this intricate mosaic discovered on the floor of a church in the ancient city of Capernaum. Wow, look at this. Where Jesus once walked and taught, its vibrant colors and striking patterns will transport you back in time and infuse your home with a sense of biblical wonder. This is really crazy. I had no idea something like this even existed. So it's like you fasten this right here. You fasten this to this. And you put it over the wine glass with a candle in it. How interesting. I've never seen such a thing. Alright, I will. Apparently you need to do this at night time so you can really enjoy that. Okay, this is so freaking awesome. I just can't even right now. This is so cool. And you know, when I went to Israel, I didn't get to experience all of the things. We only went to Old Jerusalem. And so I, if I ever get to go back, I would love to see Bethlehem, Nazareth, Galilee, all the places. <laughs> the Dead Sea. I heard you can float in the Dead Sea because it is full of salt. Um, so I didn't get to do any of that. But of course, you know, you can always go back. So that's the plan. So this is about the person that makes these that we just showed. It has his story on the back. I won't show, I won't read the whole thing, but... Um, it's a company rose to fame through the revolutionary Vazu vase, a collapsible vase sold worldwide. Okay, so he's the one that makes those. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Okay, soap. Was there some soap in here? Oh, maybe it was the lotion. Okay, Menashe's story. Um, situated in the heart of the Jezreel Valley, Menashe Malayim's factory is a perfect symbol of Israel's religious harmony. Jews, Christians, and Muslims all work on site, respecting one another's traditions. On Ramadan, no one works past one o'clock. On Christmas, workers receive holiday days, and on Passover, no one brings bread into the factory. Menashe moved from Iran at the age of 12 alone. Years later, he fell in love with textiles whilst waiting to start university and hasn't left the industry since. His scented eye masks, oh, that's the eye mask, perfectly encapsulate the aromas of the Jezreel Valley in all of its summer splendor. splendor. Simply put one in the fridge for 20 minutes before placing it on your eyes to be transported to the tranquil pastures of Northern Israel. Well, that's really cool. Okay, so that's the eye mask. And then we have one last thing here. Fruit of the land, pomegranate jam made in Israel. Wow. Who doesn't love the flavor of pomegranate, right? So, oh my gosh, I can't wait to try that. That looks so good. So these, these are the people that made the jam. Hami and Oksana's story. So there it is. The Magic Desert Factory came about by chance. Two weeks after moving to Kadesh Barnea, Hami's and Oksana's new neighbors came and brought round a large box of cherry tomatoes. 
Oksana didn't know what to do with so many cherry tomatoes, so she made jam, just as she remembered her grandmother doing in Belarus from where Oksana, o Oksana immigrated to Israel as a young woman. She liked it so much that she set up a jam factory together with her husband. Today, it produces a variety of about 60 different products. Amongst the most popular, their pomegranate jam. The factory was established about 200 meters away from the border between Israel and Egypt. Between hotbeds of Shirazi tomatoes and strawberry fields and pineapples. Every morning, residents from Kadesh Barnea pass by the guards in the Egyptian watchtower on the other side of the border fence, exchanging good morning greetings in Arabic and Hebrew in a testament to their peaceful coexistence. That is so awesome. Okay, I want to open this and smell it. Okay, I won't because then it'll probably leak on me as I go home. Look at this. Okay, you have to like, look, uh, see if you can see that. Wow, that is so cool. Okay, two little things. Shalom Alehaim. Peace upon you, ministering angels, messengers of the Most High, sent by the King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be He. The words Shalom Alehem, 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 literally translated as peace be upon you, are a popular Israel greeting that also form part of the hymn traditionally sung on Friday evening, heralding the arrival of the Sabbath. As the former, the phrase appears several times in the New Testament, appearing before the 11 in Luke 24. Jesus greets them with the words, peace be upon you, a phrase he uses again when meeting them in John 20. Shalom itself is a multifaceted word that encompasses many definitions. As such, it can variously be interpreted as peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, or even tranquility. Part of its root stems from the Hebrew word shal shalem, whole. Thus, bestowing shalom upon someone is equally a way of wishing them complete success in both their spiritual and physical endeavors. Next time you meet someone, try greeting them with this ever-relevant phrase that dates back to the biblical age. How beautiful! Let them respond with the traditional refrain, Alehem Shalom, unto you peace, emphasizing the importance of unity and togetherness in combating division. For as it as is written in Ephesians 4.3, one's task is always to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. That is beautiful. And then, one last word. Blessed are you, God, King of the universe, who forms the works of creation. Uh, learn Hebrew with Artsa. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. So this is saying transliteration. So there's a difference between translating and transliterating. You can look that up. But it's saying that this is the transliter transliteration of this. Um, there is a tradition, okay, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ose Mase Bereshi. This is a, tra a traditional prayer said upon encountering the large-scale wonders of nature. One might recite this verse upon seeing the sweeping green plains of the Jezreel Valley or its rolling hills. In all, it acknowledges the divine source of all natural beauty and the mastery of God's perfect creation. Oh, all in all, I am so, so happy with this box. It is unbelievable. I love everything in it. I'm going to put this with my other little things over here that I have. Uh, in my office and I, I'm just I think it's so awesome I'll try to find some photos to to put with this video of me in Israel with my mentor uh, we had such a wonderful time we went we saw so many sites I couldn't even remember everything we saw because we had a guide and he just talked and talked and talked 
I was so overwhelmed. I couldn't even take it all in. I wish I had journaled it. And I say that a lot and I, I'm not a journaler and I probably should do that when I go to places like that. But anyway, I would totally get this box. And so I can't wait to get the next one. It's just amazing. Thanks for watching guys. Just something that, you know, uh, can remind us of, of the Holy Land. Talk to you guys later. See you in the next video. Okay, so something I forgot to say is that I am thinking about flying out to Los Angeles um, to meet with the owners of the property um, in Costa Rica because I just feel, um, I kind of feel in my spirit that that's what I should do. And um, so I am going, I'm praying about that right now. So pray with me guys that um, I just, I want to make sure it's something that God wants and not something I just thought up um, and that pray with me that God would set that up so that I could, so I could do that. Thanks guys. Okay. I figured out what this was. It is. Oh, glasses, glasses. Earthenware mugs, handcrafted by veteran ceramicist Nur. The design draws its inspiration from the picturesque local white stone quarries. And that, that gleam under a radiant blue sky. So I couldn't leave that out of there. Thanks guys.